Well, there's opportunities certainly for the players that have been picked up here by Swallows that either coming from the lower divisions or have not been playing regular football for their previous top flight teams. And Kwapeng and Pachlele fall firmly into that particular bracket. Nyoza hasn't been with a, a professional setup this season, as last at Richards Bay in the previous campaign. Oh, Mataludi goes gliding by one, but the ball had straight out. Turned 28 uh, yesterday, did Falaki Tanini, who's just throwing the ball back into play. And good touches in the center of the park. Now, can he lift his head? Squeezing it out wide here to Pasele. Real show of intent from uh, Linda Kutliam Charlie, who did all the good work in the midfield there. Energy sapping conditions here at the Dobsonville Stadium this afternoon. As Mashakinya finds Oswin Apollos with that out ball, and now we're looking to get Apollos back on the ball. It was Nyakale Rabaru. Those two would have been familiar with uh, one another from Pretoria Kelly's last season in the championship. Swallows have certainly been on a, a little bit of a skid lately, and that's that's apart from those those walkovers, the the points that they they forfeited. They started the season losing only two of their first ten games uh, in the DSTV Premiership. They got five wins. They've now lost five of their last six, if you include the walkovers. It's still three of their last four that you that they've lost games that they've actually contested. Their last win came in early November as that one is tossed long. Nicely dealt with by the captain Bulani Nikani. You know, looking at what is happening at Swallows and what we've read about, you just have to respect the sort of players they have because of the determination that they show irrespective of the challenges that they are having and i think it also helped to have a steve compeller who had the experience having coached bloomfontein celtics who had similar challenges but managed to get the players to perform at optimal level and you've got to just give respect to coaches like that who are able to break through the mindset of the players and get them to focus on the four lines, as he always says, focus on what is happening in the field of play. We'll deal with what happens after the game. Now, give Mashakinia has released Oswin Apollos here. Mashakinia will pick it up in the midfield once again. Man who broke his uh, goal scoring droughts in the league uh, against Orlando Pirates. Scored in that 
dramatic draw. Got the equaliser. Excellent goal. First time scoring for five years in the league. Are you talking about the Pirates that are up against Sundowns later on? Yeah, the Pirates, 8 p.m. <laughs> Loftus first felt all eyes. So be on the capital. Don't move. It starts now. Yeah. With Salos against Polo Pani City. Get all your drinks ready. Get all your bright stands out. Get everything that you need because you just have to, you stuck with us the better part of this afternoon. Wealth of experience, Kwanda Mgonyama. Versatile as well, could play right back. At some point, played in midfield, defensive midfield, and yep. can play that role. Very vocal, good leadership qualities at the back. Maritz Becker say he was part of us. It was indeed. The last time he scored a league goal was for Maritzburg United uh, back in 2020, the latter parts of uh, 2020. So that goal against Mamelodi Sundown says Pulwani City go on the offensive. Nyauza is on hand to thwart the danger. The most convincing clearance, but uh, they're hoping a little further along here. And now that's falling kindly for Mapfuma in the setup. That's from Manuel Kambala, who was under pressure but did manage to get a bit of a shot away that's deflected behind. It'll be a Pulawani City corner. Gregory Jamon, pretty much a versatile player. Started Very off, versatile. of course, playing right full back. In that first game, they were playing against Sundowns. They actually won man of the match. Is it what's a break already? No, it's uh, an impromptu break oh. because. Uh, we do have Menos Sapunga down, which is why oh, okay. Paul Sitela is slowly making his way to the other side of the field. Didn't start the season, did uh, Menos Sapunga is having a few work permit issues, but uh, he is the out and out number one. So just to paint the picture for the viewer out there, the temperature was at what point? 35? Oh man. Some point out there, you yeah. can understand. But if there's a man that doesn't bother about what temperature they have, if you look at water, do you know how many of those make up that hairstyle? That sort of thing. He says he, I, he gets about 30 supply. You know that man? Yeah. I was going to say, that's the hairstyle I would not want today. Trademark. Because luckily he's found himself some, yeah, jealous. some nice shade. I'm jealous. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> but it's on days like this. It's on days, it's days like this. Like this and I value my bus cut, yeah. <laughs> Great midfielder. Of course, we saw James Ma Mayinga. It's nice to see some solos greats yeah. uh, in attendance. Even though solos can, uh, Sundowns can play me as well. So Pulwani City finally able to take that corner, picked up by Raparu, Masikinya, Mafuma's a big figure, Osanapolis gets the better of Gregory Damons, that eventually has the ball taken off of him, and Tetra will be the man to clear. What a story he's uh, he's had. Tetra sat out the whole of the 2021-22 uh, season. He's been such a loyal servant to this club as well. He was relegated from the NFD with the team in 2015-16. And then uh, was retained in the acquisition of Maccabi. That's who he is with when Solos bought their status in the championship. Then helped to promote them in 2019-20. And then you get parked on the bench. After graduating. <laughs> the mindset. Staying focused, waiting for that opportunity. He has also the polis. He's always looking to sniff out opportunities. Finds Langalitli and Klofu, and it's Apollos again who moves into space. 
been very active to get his opportunity uh, at the Africa Cup of Nations in that bronze medal match as the Mozambique Manuel Kampala is, just doesn't quite get that pass right. There is the, the Premier. Yeah, look at the swag, look at the shades. <laughs> the shed matches the shades. Well, there's a feature under Steve Compella looking to build from the back. This time, uh, Daniel Lecpe has gone long. A few very nervy uh, moments of the course of uh, the first half of the season for, for Solos as they persisted with that matter of play. We can't forget as well that Musa Nyatama had that terrific run when he had to stand in at the end of last season. Four wins that they managed and uh, effectively saved their status or at least got them out of that, that relegation dogfight. They weren't sucked into it in the last couple of games. So it'll be interesting to see exactly what he's able to produce. You know, there are coaches that have grabbed this sort of opportunity. You know, you have a coach leaving the team and you have a former player that takes over, turns things around. If you look at a John Maduka and a technical team, they took over when Steve left Celtic. <laughs> now Douglas Mafumo using his big frame to retain possession here. He's nicked away from the feet of Arsenal Apollos. Will be a throw in for Rise and Shine as they keep the pressure on. Taking an age to set himself, former Fusil Stars man like Little and Glovo eventually tosses it in. Uh, can't find a teammate, has fallen straight back to him into the clutches of Daniel Ekpe, who's been one of the ever present players for Solos this season. 14 games that they played before the two forfeited matches, he started in all of them. I think they've got two good goalkeepers. There's also Takasan and Banja yeah. who gets to be on the bench, who was at some point seen in game time. Ashkinia finding an option out wide. Takas Mafumo stationed in the box. Necessary header clear with Oswin Apollos lurking. Now Damons. Precisely cut out. Patlele relinquishes possession. This is where he loves to shoot from. Oh! Touched over by Daniel Akpe. A wicked effort from Oswin Apollos. Accepted the invitation. Era at the back, they almost got punished. Unleashed a powerful and a goal written all over it. Full laces, excellent goalkeeping there at Daniel Agbe. Switched on, but he wouldn't be happy, of course, with the defense giving away possession in that sort of area. Has been their biggest goal threat uh, this season. Four for him, Austin Apollos, as he hangs it up towards the back post. That one will come to nothing. Mahat Mukaki might have been the man to get the final touch there. I think we're talking about Ashwin Apollos. You look at the team that he's playing for, and you mentioned it, AFCON. It also says a lot in terms of the scouting team for the national team because they, they didn't exclude. They, they made sure that they cover all the Premier League teams and identify talent to contribute. I think one of the players that has been a regular feature in the national team is Nico Mopi. Yeah. <laughs> he has featured so much for the national team. Kenyama. 
Demons. Now Sunapolis for Pulawani City, turning away from Charlie. Kambal. The visitors lose out. Yes, Lindy Kukhi and Charlie. He will turn uh, 26 next month. Well, Charlie, a man who is in his second season for Solos after joining from Le Mans for Golden Arrows. Back to Nikali. It was very impressive. Uh, in keeping Mamelodi Sundowns at bay in what was their last match just before the turn of the year. It's been a very settled defence for Pulawani City uh, this season. I think when you, when you talk about the two defenders, Bukaki and Nekane, they have been the spine in terms of the defence. Venturing forward once again, and <laughs> not sure if that was intended for Douglas Mapfumo. Perhaps he was going for something a little more audacious. I'd rather qualify it and say he was trying to aim for his teammate because that was too awkward for him to try and go direct. So midway through the first half uh, and we will be having a cooling break which won't surprise anyone in attendance. Neither of these teams in uh, particularly good form at the moment but uh, considering how long the hiatus has been, the AFCON enforced break, uh, maybe you can't take too much from that form. Pulawani City just one win in their last uh, eight league games. That was away to Chippy United just before Christmas. Arsenalopolis with a brace. Let's listen and see if we can uh, eavesdrop on Musa Nitama. The Mr. Mabena in conversation with his teammates. The coach at some point said to his players, let's manage the game. Mm -hmm. Of course they are conscious of the heat. I think it's been fairly noticeable that uh, many of those out on the park today are playing within themselves, but it, it does speak to the conditions. His game has matured. Like I said, at Chippa, when he started there, he was playing as a fullback. Pushed forward now. He's got Umpatheras supporting him. Douglas Makfumo, a Black Leopards man who uh, showed some promise at the beginning of the season in terms of getting in amongst the goals, but those have rapidly dried up. About black leopards down the ascendancy in the Mutsipi League. They're no longer, you know, when you look at black leopards, you try and find them, it's no longer bottom two. That's <laughs> yeah. Still early stages, though, but. Uh, Rofi Kaduba. The day will come. To look at both of these tiers and wonder where the goals might come from today. Uh, Pulwani City have scored in just one of their last uh, five games. We shut out in four of their last five. It's also Napolis's brace against Chippy United, the only exception. Then you look at uh, Swallows and obviously excluding the two walkovers, uh, they themselves have only netted one in their last five, and that was Gabadina Maango in the the losing cause against Supersport United midway through December. A game that they barely prepared for. They hadn't trained for 10 days before that uh, fixture against Supersport. 
So from between the, the, the defeat to Orlando Pirates and the Super Sport game, they didn't train at all. It's been a very tumultuous period for the birds. They'll be looking to get themselves back on track. And uh, when you look at the log standings, you do worry that uh, perhaps they could slip a little further down. As it stands, they have a six-point buffer between themselves and the side that are in the promotion relegation playoff spot. That's Richards Bay down in 15th. Cape Town Spurs at this point, they cut adrift uh, with just the four points. So, barring something miraculous, I think many have concluded that they are likely to, uh, to face relegation this season. Who's best? Spurs, I think Spurs, yeah. Yeah. But then they brought in a master, of course, an experienced yeah, cool. coach, who has turned things around at some point for the likes of Maritz back. But we're talking about a turnaround here. I know. That is just I know. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> Almost I know. seems beyond the realms of possibility. <laughs> Isn't there a line that says impos impossible is nothing? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> if you believe. <laughs> Damon's penalised. Had his hands all over like a little club. So, in conversation with the, the trainers particular for Polo Kwani City uh, after this break that they've had you say what's been the focus there's a question of playing a lot of short five or side games yeah, yeah. to try and reignite the memory levels muscle memory get the ball the boys to to adjust yeah, the good chat with uh, their physical trainer, that's to Philip Manamela, said uh, gave him about a week break uh, yeah. after New Year's. Now an opportunity here for Swallows. Nothing comes of that. Manuel Kampala able to find also an Apollos. Yeah, getting back to that point, uh, about a week off and then started with 11-sided games just to get the feel again of uh, football and then have been focusing on the smaller-sided games, more skill-based uh, in the run-up to the league's resumption. Now that's moved along to Mashikinya and out wide to Mataludi once again. His cross from deep. It's away. Kambala, Mataludi. Nikani for Pulugwani City. Find a route forward. Mashikinia spotting us in a polis and a little bit of space, but the flight of that ball well tracked. It's a game where when you look at it, you say, beginning to ask where the goal might come from. Again, we're talking about shots and target, which we haven't seen much of them. Yeah. Well, probably one city have had, coming into this game, just 46 shots on target this season. Their conversion rate of 9.6%, that's the third lowest in the league. Only Chippe and Cape Town Spurs have been worse. Swallows have had... Just 36 shots on target this season. That's the lowest of any team in the division. So, yeah, if we're trying to paint a picture for you about a potential lack of goals in this tie, and that should be evidence enough. And if you need more, well, you just go back to their meeting earlier this season, which ended in a goal of stalemate. And here am I trying to say, I think we're going to see a goal of three. Maybe because we missed the DSTV Premiership and there's expectations, Stellenbosch Super Sport gave us two goals. Yes. Yep. 
Bradley Krobler moving level with uh, Mayo and Ribeiro Costa, the top of the goal scoring charts. Ikram Reynes uh, keeping them within touching distance, scoring his sixth of the season. I must say, uh, yeah, to think that Reynes at some point was playing here yeah, for Super Sport and struggled. Very, yeah. Struggled really so struggling. much, but now back playing for Stellenbosch and he seems to be enjoying his football. All right, heavy challenge. Uh, play continues as Damons links up with uh, a teammate rather cleverly. Nice touch from him. With the heel extension on the Kutlin Chai. Stellum Chai laying it off. Oh, poor pass there. In an effort to uh, find Pashlele on the flank. And Jacob Everson really needed to be a little more assured. With the touch, a man that they recruited from uh, Timbisa Hollywood Thunder. I also think that there was something lacking in terms of his peripheral vision. He, yeah. he was just hell bent on trying to play it onto the side. But if he had turned, he would realize he had so much space, he could have picked a sport and try and go for a goal himself. Good to see him get an opportunity in the professional ranks, though. And uh, well, something that Paul alluded to uh, prior to the match is that uh, he wasn't really picked up on the basis of his performances in the ABC Mazepe League, but rather in the Phillies games where he was playing for Abarondoli. It was there that he impressed. The Phillies games. Yeah. The Phillies games. Here he is on the ball. Comes inside and launches towards goal. Rather away with efforts. Saw an opportunity there to make himself uh, an instant hero. At this stage, I think the tempo of the game suits Polo Bunny's. Well positioned was Lebohan Kaki. That's experience, that's good positioning, anticipation as well by Kaki. Nothing wrong in switching it on to the right. Good control has to come out. Definitely on target. Seems to be busy ever since. It seems to be have been given the free roll. You see him on the right hand side, gets into the center of the midfield, drifts onto the left hand side. More of a free roll. Again, there's concern for Tabang Mataluri. 
It's one of those plays that Bulawani City cannot afford to lose. Tower, assisted by Detective Toto. Former players, yeah, taking up coaching. A lot of them doing well. And so now of course, now in charge of security. Mention of uh, CM aside, Kukuni United, they'll be in action against Richards Bay. They host them right, uh, this afternoon. Kitam Spurs entertaining Amazulu. And then uh, one fixture stands alone, has its own time slot. 8 p.m. One of the glamour fixtures of South African football. Mamelodi Sundowns, Orlando Pirates. And... Uh, Considering the start that Mamelodi Sundowns have made uh, for, for any of the teams that are in the chasing pack and some way adrift, they would need a side like Orlando Pirates to, to go to Loftus, spring a surprise, produce a shock result, so that the other teams to feel like perhaps they are still in it. There's Mamelodi Sundown to such a significant advantage of eight points over current second place team Super Sports United, having played three fewer games than them. When you talk about standalone fixtures, I'm reminded that uh, there's, a, there's a line that says that uh, all animals are equal. <laughs> in terms of stature, you know that type of thing? That's a that's a fixture and a half because I'm sure you know a lot of fans would be glued to the TVs and wanting to see what's going to come up of that particular fixture. Video, I'm to see Ronaldo lineup because he's been without uh, a whole host of his players. No, there's bulk of the Pafana team, so he's been working with different players. Uh, so who, who will start? Who will? Yes. How will you mix them together? No, there's one man they were looking for to see launch. That's true, <laughs> yeah. High profile recruits, yeah. high profile January recruits for Mamelodi Sundowns. As Langley and Loves flings it out to the opposite flank. And then uh, that effort is straight down the throats of Daniel Ekpe uh, from uh, Mokibulu Rama. Abu. He's only got the one goal this season that came in October against Richards Bay. Looks like him Just a little bit too heavy. Worth the pass from the uh, three-year-old who wears the captain's armband. That was the intended throw. target of that pass. Jacob Everson. Mataludi. Nicely done. Can't pick out Mapfumo. Looking for the space to cross, can't find it, but there's Oswald Apollos on hand. Skips past one and then the other and brought down by Falaki Tsanini. 
Also, the Polis is just very nippy, difficult to, to handle. Tanini with the with the foul, man who turned 28 yesterday, hails from Dundee. Apollos, again, when you look at the role that he's been given, you find him operating on the left-hand side, he goes into the center, yeah. he's on the, it's more of a free role for him, that number 10 role suits him quite better, but you would expect him to do better when it comes to combining with the man that leads that front line, Douglas Mafumo. So from the set piece, Ooh. I think Mapfumo was the intended target. And he got something on that, just couldn't direct it towards goal. You know, the beauty about this game is that Ooh. you've got to have a couple of arsenals about you in terms of getting goals. Set pieces should be one of the strengths that you have as a team. Now look at this, straight down the other end. Paulus Taylor had been able to keep up nicely with play and Mauricio Moretti was also on hand just to uh, to rule that there was nothing in that as Letia Kwapeng remains prone on the floor now with a man down Nyama was reluctant to uh, to keep the ball moving because Nenekutli and Charlie was calling for it I think what happened there let's have a look Sandwich by two players. Hmm. Was there any funny tackle there? Malicious. Is, Is it how he lands? Because I don't think there's enough contact to warrant a foul. Maybe it's how he landed. Well, Nikani was on the stretch, desperate to get something on that to uh, thwart the, the attack. Helped up here by Kelly Richards. There's the thumbs up from her. So he'll be able to continue. Let's see a cropping. <laughs> I don't know that registration plan. Yeah. Definitely not mine, Grant. It's got my same name on it, but it's not me. I don't know that registration. You see that the fans have become accustomed to uh, having decisions reviewed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we haven't introduced it here yet. I was inquiring about possibilities, and then it was all about the, the dollars and the euros mm -hmm. to <laughs> get it right. It's not even the rains or anything like that. We are into the three additional minutes. We'll let that run. Kwapeng seems to be okay. Yeah. Ready to come back. He's back on. Daniel Akpe is still... Uh, he has a few years left in his legs, 37 years of age. But uh, if you're watching Super Sports coverage of the Africa Cup of Nations, he definitely has a, a future as a pundit.
more in the midfield than to lead that front line. Booked. Uh, that is the case. Gregory Damons has missed a lot of football this, uh, this season. Looks as though he will assemble himself as part of the wall. It's a potentially dangerous free kick. Daniel Ekpe has to deal with yet. Yeah. A few players very interested. Is the angle against them in terms of trying to maybe take this one direct? So it will be also in Apollos, not, not his best. Did you see the rugby pole somewhere here? <laughs> I have seen them. They're on the far side of the other fields. That would have matched that, but uh, that's way off target. Not the best at all. Mahango sits on the bench uh, for Morocco Swallows has hit two direct free kicks this season. His first player since uh, Tupoho Mokwena a couple seasons back for Super Sport United to hit two direct free kicks in the same season. It's been nine direct free kicks scored so far this campaign. There were only seven in the DSTV Premiership last season. So if you, we, if you were to do the comparison between Tapajino Mahango and the collage of set pieces that he scored vis-a-vis yeah. -vis Mukwena, and can we add the one that I've got as well? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I 
keep pushing him and say, you haven't scored enough. I've seen yeah. five of the best, but I'm sure you can do more. And he says, I'll prove you. Here's Ramabu's delivery. Headed away with authority, although it's come at some personal cost here. Aerial balls are always tricky. Mm. You are brave to go for it. There's a late challenge. Sometimes clash of heads, shoulders, landing awkward. I get relieved when I say it's not concussion. And we have had a couple of those. Litsia seems to be okay. Some of this clash of heads. I find someone's dental formula becomes incomplete. <laughs> it's up to them. Drop ball from the referee. Back underway. Solos of those two forfeited matches now winless in seven. Since uh, a goal from Keenan Phillips won them the game against TS Galaxy back in November. Last time they went this long without a win in uh, the top flight was at the very beginning of the 2021-22 season uh, from August into December when they were winless in 12. I we'll hope that their current run doesn't extend much longer. We have a pretty decent record against sides from the Limpopo province uh, of late to Morocco Swallows. Uh, at home in the DSTV Premiership since their promotion, they've played Limpopo sides eight times. They've won four, drawn two, and lost two. But they've actually won their last three visits from uh, or against teams from the province. Alexander. Rudy. Took a little deflection, which made it awkward for Akpe, and he was comfortable letting that one, letting that one go, aware of where his uh, his uprights were. Might have made the changes, but it hasn't altered the tempo of the game. Mm. It's, it's still the same. Will be that sort of game where the details becomes important around the box. It will take some special goal as well, and I say special goal because there is a certain Dumiso Mapena that also can convert for a dead ball situation or so set piece. Yeah, were you surprised to see that he didn't take that uh, that free kick? Probably one he said he yet to score from a direct free kick this season. There was because uh, maybe based on reputation and knowing what he's capable of doing. Akpe collects. It was actually a player that was brought in by or brought into the side by the Thorn of the CM that gave him a, a chance and signed him to be part of the team. They've gone for trials, but no one was really keen really to give him a chance. But uh, the son of La Siema, based on the history that he's got with the Mr. Mapena, eventually gave him a chance. Prior to that, he was back at Pirates training with them. Tapunga, Nikani. It's the work from the Tsekwapeng. Cole Alexander cleaning up. Nikani gets it forward. No longer have the towering frame of Douglas Mafumo to aim for, but they are a little bit mobile, more mobile now up front. Oh, that's just run away from Oswin Apollos. A 
experience is important. That's what he's using, Dumiso Mabena. His positioning, of course, his pace. More of an additional attacking midfield alongside Cole Alexander. Kunyama. Going forward to Palani now, trying to make some tracks down the, the right hand flank. Patlene and Damons. Damons flicks it forward. This could be promising for Swallows. And he kind of deals with the danger. Oh, he thought about it for a second. He packs one of the more powerful shots in the division, that being Mancini Palani. And only one league goal uh, in the last six seasons that he's managed to score, though it was a cracker for Royal AM versus Mamelodi Sundowns uh, last season. Who's getting booked here? Yeah, Sanini booked late birthday present uh, after he celebrated his 28th yesterday. Won the uh, the Disky Challenge back in 2017-18 with Lamont for Golden Arrows uh, and moved on to Mvoti and Utungati and signed from Utungati last year by Solos. Here's a look at why he's uh, picked up a yellow card. So nil nil when they met earlier in the season, but uh, before Swallows were relegated from the top flight, they had some highly entertaining battles, these two sides. Mataludi flings it in. Not clear yet. Nice drops here for Oswinopolis. He's being pursued by Patlele. Polis giving him the run around. Polis again. And he goes for it from range, and the rebound is tucked away. Bulawani City have the lead. Who is able to profit from the spillage. And he gets his second goal in the DSTV Premiership this season. Daniel Akpe asks questions of the heavens. If ever there's a ball that frustrates any goalkeeper, it's a shot that bounces in front of you. Yeah. Because it's difficult to deal with. Those are shots that I used to see from the great Kalusha Biala. But when you take this sort of shot, once it does this, it is tricky for the keeper to deal with. But it is nice when you have a player that is so alert in the box and it becomes an easy tap in. <laughs> and it's even nicer. Reminiscence of what the great Max Maponyane used to do. Jersey number seven and Chiefs. This sort of loot balls. He used to pounce on them. Super saps. They are leading away from home. Good intentions to say we are going to attack in the yeah. second half. And they have been rewarded, Polokwane City. Well, he stayed alive when the shot came in. And uh, not sure if it's a scuffed effort or just a very clever effort because he played it into the ground and almost looped over at back. Yeah. The irony of that is that he hit the target twice in the first half with two very conventional shots that were fairly easy for, for a play to save. Uh, as Nikoni is the latest. player to go into the book here so will they be able to hang on to this lead Pulwani City they've scored the opening goal for the seventh time in the DSTV Premiership this season uh, previously they've gone on to win five games they've only lost once that was all the way at the beginning of the season they scored the opener and they went on to lose 3-2 to Le Mans for Golden Arrows but of late when they do manage to get a goal done a pretty decent job 
of hanging on to it. Contrast yep. that with uh, with Swallows, who this season have conceded first for the ninth time. They have managed to come back once, 2-1 victory against Amasulu earlier in the campaign. And generally, it hasn't gone particularly well for them the eight previous occasions where they've conceded first. They've lost six of those. Drawn just the one. One just the one. Opportunity here for them to head back. So it is Paul Ennis, a good one. And they'll be feeling as though they should have got more from that. Lynn Goodley and Charlie, the man to turn it over. Superb delivery. Pinpoint. Not a bad header, but at least get it on target to Charlie. Lovely delivery from uh, Zanini. Who will play a much bigger role uh, in the remainder of this season, having uh, prior to today only made one start in the DSTV Premiership that was against Orlando Pirates in uh, December, further three appearances off the bench as well. I can tell you that uh, Solos are about to introduce Gabardino Mahango. Also, when Apollos holds off the challenge, Wangelisli and Glovu. Apollos again always seems to be available. Nothing wrong with that challenge as Solos now trying to get on the front foot. Well cut out by Kambala. This to Misuma Pena. Oh! Feeling the debutant, Sabalala. And he just can't control effectively enough. I thought he was about to pull the trigger. Lovely little disguise. Pulls. I was encouraging it to <laughs> say, why don't you have a goal for it? Passed on the responsibility to Shabalala. There's the man we're talking about. Yeah. Dead ball specialist. On a good day, he can win you a game. Gaba. Kevin Hunt watching, he says, he used to play for me. He used to score goals for me. At Bet Vets Vets. Amazulu will be saying, hey, don't forget us. He was part of us as well, and he scored. Orlando Pirates will also say, we remember him, we know him. Tanini links up with Gavadini Mahango, gets his first touch, awkward. Yes. Tumbling over there does uh, Jacob Everson. Kunyama. Amanyo Kampala for Pulimani City. Good challenge from Msali. This is Mahango. Kampala scrambling back and committing the foul. So, Governor Mahango, a minute after being introduced, has an opportunity from a set piece here. Amanyo Kampala is into the book. Love it because it looks like Kappa wants to take it. His teammate wants to take it. Who's assigned to take the set? Surely it's got to be Gabadina <laughs> Mahango. You think? Based on reputation. Based right? on reputation. Okay. Yeah. You know, there's a, a little flick on the ball there from uh, Manuel Kambala, who immediately points to it to say, I did touch it. Four yellow cards brandished now. Two apiece. There's three players. Three. We are seeing it's suited for Capatino Mahango. Someone might say. Well, Solo's lost. Goal was well, a Gabadino Mahango free kick against Super Sports United. Go oh, and he does it. Lashes that one into the wall, so 
seniority won the day. I guess reputation won the day, but this time couldn't get it up and over. I was mentioning some of those uh, highly entertaining matches that these two sides have played out in the past, the 2014-15 season when uh, Solos were were relegated. They won at home 3-2 on that particular day. Uh, the great Lorato Shabango scoring a brace. Fiasili Wainer on the uh, score sheet as well. Pulawani City. One of their two goals coming from uh, Puleng Marema, who was then Klolani. Along with uh, Shabango, he's, he's got two goals in ties uh, in this particular tie. Straight at Daniel Akpe. He's never been an away winner in this fixture. But Puruwani City have an opportunity to extend their advantage. The Solo is living dangerously. The clearance from Martin. 25 last month. Uh, despite his position as full back, he always seems to chip in with goals. Got a, a few last season in the championship. He already has one this term against Super Sports United. As they play the ball out, the man down. Kambala a little worse for wear. Yeah, I'm trying to see Bye. if there's a scar or something. Mm. Is he pointing for the benefit of the physio or for the referee? I'm not sure. Let's have a look at this, what actually happened. I thought that was on the knee. Mm. The first touch is holding, oh. exposed him. The let off. nil-nil the other game that's uh, on simultaneously it's currently on DSTV stream Chippy United hosting uh, Cape Town City at uh, Buffalo City uh, Stadium that particular match after 45 minutes was one all it's still one all uh, can you Mayo scoring about midway through the first half so he's top of the goal scoring charts standing alone with uh, eight goals and will come to equalized in that particular match. Ball given away cheaply, but Cole Alexander takes care of it. Now my bear a little touch to Alexander again. Good, simple, effective play, and Ramabu has it. He just plays this role quite well, just to be the linksman. Wealth of experience, could lead that front line, but play more the linksman, as you've mentioned. Two previous occasions that uh, Swallows have been the hosts of this particular fixture in the 2013-14 season and 14-15. Uh, they failed to keep a, a clean sheet in either of those games. 2-1 uh, in 2013-14. Edward Mangale and Rudy Isaac scoring for, for Swallows as they won. And then 3-2 here on their own patch uh, in the, the following season. In fact, neither side has been able to keep a clean sheet when Swallows are the hosts. So Pulugwani City could become the first. Also level things up in terms of the head-to-head -head stakes. Five games played in the DSTV Premiership. One win for Pulugwani City and two for Swallows. Come up. Oh, it's a good ball there. No! Lovely delivery from Ramabu. We find the danger man, Oswin Apollos, who will know 
that he should have converted. Lovely cross, as you mentioned. The sort of cross that says, just tap me in. Yep. That's the sort of pass. That's definitely a foul. Be talking about the cross. In swing. Mm. Mm. It's the technique. I think he was also trying to celebrate. <laughs> because it looks like it had a goal written over it. And just couldn't get it right technically. So that ball has been kept in. Or well, prevented from going behind at least. The change is about, it's about to happen for Swallows. Yep. Augustin Masonoko, remember him? That was on trials of Swallows now as they looked for new players. Been around the block, hasn't he? Oh, Daniel Akbe had to stretch there. Tanini has gone back here to Nyauza. from Mabena. But Kanyama uh, well positioned. I think when you're watching Dumiso Mabena, you're actually looking at a player whose game has evolved and the maturity levels, the touches that he makes, but he needs to be surrounded by players that understand mm -hmm. his next move. <laughs> You know? And in that instance, he's trying to link up with a young yeah. debutante. <laughs> yeah, that type of thing. Stretch to intercept there. Dead in global, but Solos still come away with the ball. Flung out to the opposite flank where Jacob Everson was waiting. So, with the throw, break and play, an opportunity for... Follows to make a couple of changes. Gregory Davids was uh, yellow carded just after the interval. Is being withdrawn as is the debutant Jacob Everson who was appearing in professional football in the top flight for the first time in his career. And we will see the introduction here of Augustine Matanoko for his Swallows debut. Choice from La Masia. Well, La Masia was... Uh, the team he was at last, Pretoria Kelly's before that. He'd have a stint at Baraka after leaving Orlando Pirates, where he had been a highly touted prospect and really starred for their reserves. Hasn't quite hit the heights expected of him. But uh, at 22 years of age, plenty of football to come in his career. The other player introduced uh, alongside him took his Rabule. One of those who was retained or returned despite the mess clear out at Solos. Gaki scrapes it away. So now if you are Polokwane City, you've introduced or the strikers, you've got something out of it. You've got to find ways of managing the game. Like 
Bay involved once again. Controlled with the the hand. Did uh, Schwabule? the sense perhaps uh, there's a few players out there that might have run out of steam but are obligated to stay on when do you think solos or have they already kicked up a gear because they're going to need to show a little bit more urgency than they have at some point in the very near future it has to be an immediate <laughs> 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 what is to their disadvantage is that Polo and City, in as much as when they made their changes, they were free flowing and they mm. showed intent in terms of getting the goal. But there's so much stop starts, which breaks the rhythm of Solos. They, they might have made changes, but I'm talking about the stop starts, which frustrates the team that wants to bounce back. And at this stage, it's the host, the Solos, that have got to try and build up some rhythm. And with the experience of Polokwane City defense and midfield wise, they do all of the stop stats, it works to their advantage. Do they have an alternative? Dead ball situation, we know what Kwapeng can do, but we haven't seen him in action, supply, and maybe now with Capadino Mango around him, something might come up. Another long throw from Mataludi. Just hangs it up towards the back post. We also know Polis has kept it alive. Daniel Ekpe has it in his clutches. Bulwani City hoping to preserve their lead, which would uh, see them move up to 24 points and level with sixth place Kaiser Chiefs. They would be behind them on goal difference, though, but uh, a healthy accrual of points in the first half uh, of the season has to be set. They are five points better off than the last time they were in the top flight. Uh, five points better off at this exact stage. They had 16 points after 16 games in the 2019-20 season. At this point in the season, they had just managed to uh, beat Chippa United to end what was a nine-game losing streak. Um, they eventually would go down. When we talk about a team that's supposed to survive, they're putting themselves in a good position, Polokwane City. Of course, part of it will credit it to Sierra, who had a good start with them and accumulated that many points. And you have the current coach taking over and trying to consolidate that because it's going to get tougher. It will get tougher. Mabena darts into space and then tries to. Uh, a sneaky back heel. What it has done is won them another throw in an advanced position. It's been a mixed bag in terms of these long throws from Mataludi. Some have been rather easily dealt with. There's been a few that have caused a bit of panic. How many players do you can remember who's got this, who are specialists in terms of these long throws? Just on top of your head. Would you think about yeah. it? <laughs> well, let's go. <laughs> Oh, he does get an opportunity to put something into the box. That one will run out on the other flank. Unless it's an extraordinary weapon, and I wouldn't necessarily class Mataludis as being an extraordinary long throw. It's, uh, yeah, it's not something that resonates with a lot of people, I guess. Um, it seems just a rather agricultural approach, <laughs> tossing the ball in extremely long and just <laughs> hoping... Yeah. That's it. That's a set piece of its own. That throw in is a set piece of its own. May so rest in peace. There was a gentleman that specialized in this sort of thing. So 
Iwi Kambule. <laughs> uh, he was a specialist. And, uh, if now I, we're, we're talking getting it to the you yeah. know to the six yard box, getting to the penalty spot, yes, that kind he of would distance. Get it yeah. That distance. Yeah. And um, I think there was a guy called Melvin Hopflish. I think he played for it. He was also a specialist. was a short guy at Supersport. I can't remember his name. I think he was playing for Kelly's at some point. He was also a specialist when it came to long throwings. This is also an Apollos. Ball taken away from him by Charlie. And then on the scene is the goal scorer, Ramabu. When he celebrated his 21st birthday at the end of uh, last year. season he is having in the top flights <laughs> seems unwilling to chase as Kambala spots some space that's a good ball from the Mozambique what can Bulawani City make of this still it's not clear that Mabena eventually mugged of possession Possession turned over a few times in quick succession there. Matuluri, Chabalala, back to him from Cole Alexander. Apollos was on the move but straight off sides. Matuluri has Ramabu on his outside. Also Apollos. Ah, the poor ball. Is it just me? But I think the Swallows players look very tired. Yeah. Nobody agree I'm with saying, it. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the defense and midfield. And they are being dominated by this Polo Pony City team who are even controlling the tempo of the game. And I'm looking at Nyauza. Not sharp at all. Yeah, well, I mean, we did speculate at half time, the two yeah. of us, that uh, we would probably see uh, a significant change entering into the final quarter of an hour in terms of Swallows potentially running out of steam. They must have had a fairly disrupted month and a half, uh, whilst other teams would have been preparing meticulously for the resumption of the league season. And it's full of cities to lose here. It is theirs to lose. So far, so good. You know that man with the dreadlocks, right? Well, I mean, Le cam Fatutulupa. Camera's on him for the umpteenth time today. <laughs> <laughs> Le Fatutulupa, James Mayinga in attendance. Enjoying some of the best seats in the house. They're about to make another swap. Polokwane City. There's an effort from range. Cole Alexander having a go. Kounkwe is about to come on for Polokwane City. It's Apollos. Yeah, we're learning that Apollos is uh, in his race here, so he will be withdrawn and a young uh, Kwe is onto the field. Uh, one of a, a few that were recruited from Pretoria Kelly's along with uh, Rapadu and Austin Apollos at the beginning of this season. Kwe coming on to make his eighth appearance in the DSTV Premiership. This is his first season in the top flight. They are showing their maturity in terms of defending their lead. The stop starts forcing Swallows to commit fouls. 
He's regaining advantage. I think there's going to be two saps from Swallows. Back to Sapunga. So Swallows are training. They're going to have a centre back coming on. Vusi Sibiria will be coming on from Tsiki Lalonyauza. So we uh, will see the departure here of Falaki Chani. And Nyauza will also be withdrawn. So Vusi Sibiria is... Uh, on the 29 year old who has appeared quite frequently for for solos this season since joining from Stellenbosch and then we also see the introduction here for his debut Roland Sanu a young man from Burkina Faso so it'll be interesting to see what he's able to muster up as Pulawani City look to double their advantage queer involved Sibia, very vocal, left-footed centre-back, reads the game well, very experienced. Nyauza, lacking sharpness. I'm not too sure whether you want to have a centre-back as a sub when you're actually trading. Mm. But then again, it just could have been a question of even the last, uh, the remaining minutes, would he have been able to see them out competently enough and perhaps the verdict from the bench was that no he wouldn't have the legs yeah but it'll be interesting to see what the young uh, Bukanabe player is able to do 21 years of age Sanu He just made his way on. Kwe is, uh, is booked, assumedly, for, was it for time wasting or was it for stealing, uh, stealing a few too many yards for the throw in? Pay collects. Two minutes of regulation time remaining. Solo's labor to uh, to get back into position. And they'll escape without conceding the corner. Matuluri being pursued by Gabarino Mahango. This is Mshali for Swallows. Shwabule. And he launches in across. No one there to receive. You know when you see that a team is not so well oiled, when you get your teammate going down the line, that should be about three options. 
for him to pick out a player. And at this stage, I've just looked at the organization in the box or in the opponent box for Swallows and the options were not there. Oh man, that's uh, two yellow cards in quick succession for time wasting. Lange Little and Glovo is the latest. <laughs> when last? Five minutes. Yeah, there's additional time to be added. This is exactly where Bulugwani City want to be. In control of the ball. Deep into the opposition territory. Nice skills out wide. That won't make its way through to Mabena. His eyes lit up for just a moment. I think you've got to give it to the Bulugwani City coach in terms of the changes that he made. If you haven't done this on Mabena, there's a lot of experience in there. And in terms of his link up play but Cole Alexander adds to the steal in the midfield and they scored an important goal so they still very, look very organized in the midfield not so not enough. cross from deep Sapunga flaps at that his defense bails him out What do Swallows have left in the tank? Those that have started the game and of course the reinforcements that they introduced. Can they combine effectively in the additional minutes that remain to mount some kind of telling offensive? Team like uh, Skakuni United, you you don't expect them to to stay behind Solos for for much longer if Solos stay stay stagnant. The same could be said of Chippy United, although they are rather patchy as well. And then all of a sudden, uh, and the birds could find them sucked into a, a worrying relegation battle. Oh, oh, Sitela really should have let uh, should have let the game run, and I think. Well, what was the call? Because I'm, I'm sure he, he gestured in I mean, the... equally as confused. <laughs> because I, I thought it's did, advantage yeah. Polokwane and Saint. That's bizarre. Maranoko always sits upfield. <laughs> did he touch the ball, Maranoko? aware of where it was I only called time on his own uh, playing career not so long ago Musun Yatama and he thrust into the hot seat once again Queer retrieves Cole Alexander and still Cole Alexander it will be a goal kick and it will present perhaps one last opportunity to the hosts here. Yeah. Spinner. A really difficult period for Swallows of late and they are facing yet another home defeat they came into this match having lost their last three in a row at home including the uh, the walkover the three nil that uh, Le Mans for Golden Arrows were awarded and there is the final whistle and Pulawani City have come to Gauteng
and picked up the full complement of points. And for the first time in eight visits to the province, dating back to their previous uh, time in the top flights in 2019-20, they win a match away to a Gauteng side. And it was uh, perhaps not the prettiest, not, not